Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. Another year has come and is nearly gone, and in that time, a lot of films were released in theaters. A few of the films did incredibly well at the box office, some did reasonably well, and some just managed to break even. But a large number of them failed to break even, and a few of those failed spectacularly. (laughs) So in this video, we're going to examine the films that flopped at the box office in 2022. But before we do that, let's examine the one film that literally outperformed every other film that was released this year. And that film was Top Gun Maverick which starred Tom Cruise and earned nearly $1,488,000,000 at the global box office, which was incredibly well done. And it did that with a production budget of $170,000,000, which is less than some of the films that flopped in 2022. (laughs) Of all the films released in 2022, I examined 42 based on their production budgets and whether they were actually released in theaters. I excluded any films that went direct to streaming, as well as Avatar The Way of Water, because it just opened in theaters and is actively earning money. Of those 42 films, their production budgets range from $250 million at the most expensive end to $13 million at the lowest end. Excluding Avatar The Way of Water... Thor Love and Thunder had the largest production budget of $250 million, and it did break even because its global box office earnings were nearly $761 million, so it definitely made a profit. The film with a $13 million production budget was the 2022 film Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, and its earnings put it into a bit of a gray area, meaning that it might have broken even, but if it didn't, then it probably didn't lose that much money. But of the 42 films that I examined, 19 very clearly flopped because they failed to earn at least two times their production budgets. And that's based on the fact that movie theaters keep at least 50% of the gross box office ticket sales for themselves. One of the films, which did just barely manage to earn two times its production budget, clearly failed to break even. So I included that one with the other 19 that I just mentioned. 15 of the 42 films that I examined more than likely broke even because their global box office earnings were more than three times their production budgets, with one of them being Top Gun Maverick, which earned 8.7 times its reported production budget. (laughs) The other seven films fall into the gray area, meaning that they earned between two and three times their production budgets. And of those seven, two were quite a bit below two and a half times their production budgets. So it's fairly safe to say that those two fail to break even. Thus, we can safely say that of the 42 films that I examined, at least 22 of them failed, which comes out to just over 52%. And of the eight films that had production budgets that were greater than the 170 million production budget that Top Gun Maverick had, six are among the 22 films that flopped. <laughs> So without further ado, here are the 22 films from 2022 with production budgets of at least $13 million that flopped in theaters. In the $20 million loss range, there are two films, DC League of Super Pets, which had overall positive reviews, but it failed to attract an audience, and Morbius, which was utterly despised by critics. In the $30 million loss range, there are several films, and we'll begin with The Woman King which attempted to rewrite the history of the African kingdom of Dahomey and its women warriors who were heavily involved in the slave trade, as I've spoken about in previous videos. Rotten Tomatoes still shows its highly skewed average audience score as compared with those on IMDb and Metacritic, which are much lower and are essentially in agreement with one another. So it's quite clear that Rotten Tomatoes is artificially manipulating its audience score for this flopped film. Next is Beast, which also flopped and had mixed reviews. Then there was Armageddon Time, which received a poor audience score. And finally in this range, there was Lyle Lyle Crocodile, which also appears to have a deliberately skewed average audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, 
because it's quite different from the scores on IMDb and Metacritic, which are in agreement with each other. Going into the $40 million loss range, we'll begin with the movie Bros, which is a gay rom-com that failed at theaters spectacularly. As with The Woman King and Lyle Lyle Crocodile, the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes for Bros is clearly skewed because the similar scores on IMDb and Metacritic are drastically lower. A lack of straight characters in this film was probably a contributing factor to its massive box office failure. Then there was The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which had overall positive reviews, but simply failed to attract a large enough audience. There is only one film that was in the $50 million loss range, and that film was Blacklight, which starred Liam Neeson. But it was highly panned by critics, having only a 10% tomato meter score on Rotten Tomatoes. And in spite of a relatively high audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, which may be the result of tampering, the similar scores on IMDb and Metacritic are extremely low. The film very simply was a dud. <laughs> Now we have to skip over to the $80 million loss range with the film Paws of Fury, The Legend of Hank, which was panned by both critics and audience members alike. Then there was Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which didn't completely go straight to streaming as it had a brief international theatrical run where it earned a paltry $51,000. It has very good reviews and probably would have done well had it been released in theaters instead of going straight to streaming on Netflix. Next, we'll go into the $90 million loss range, where we'll begin with Death on the Nile, which in spite of being directed by Kenneth Branagh and with an all-star cast, it simply came up short with critics and had mixed audience reviews. The next film in this range is the first of the 2022 flops to have a nine-digit production budget, $200 million, meaning that it's one of the films that was more expensive to produce than the wildly successful Top Gun Maverick. And that film is Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. This film just barely earned more than two times its production budget, with a global box office take of $404 million. But it fell short of being able to break even thanks to Warner Brothers recasting Johnny Depp, J.K. Rowling's controversial social media comments, and Ezra Miller's troubles with law enforcement. This was the first film related to the Harry Potter universe to flop, and will likely be the last Fantastic Beasts film to be produced. When I watched it, I was not impressed with the film, nor were the critics and most audience members. Then there was the film The King's Daughter, which was critically panned on Rotten Tomatoes, and according to IMDb, the audience wasn't impressed with it either. Now it's time for the films that quite possibly had losses in the nine-digit range, and we'll begin with the first film to find itself in the 100 million loss range, and that film was Black Adam which was panned by critics and had mixed audience scores. It was also one of the 2022 flops that had a production budget that was larger than the one for Top Gun Maverick. The next film in this range was The 355. This film only had a $75 million budget and an estimated break-even point of $187.5 million. But it was so unpopular and disliked that it only earned $18.9 million at the global box office. So it lost around $169 million. This was truly one of the biggest flops of 2022. <laughs> and the third entry in this range of losses was the film Amsterdam, which also hardly earned anything at the global box office. With an $80 million production budget and an estimated break-even point of $200 million, the film only earned $29 million at the global box office for a loss of around $171 million. <laughs> it was panned by both critics and the audience alike. Now we'll jump into the $200 million loss range with the animated Pixar movie Lightyear. I covered this film's poor box office in several videos after it first came out. With a massive production budget of $200 million, which was greater than the one that Top Gun Maverick had, the film's break-even point was around $500 million, but it only earned just under $219 million at the global box office for a loss of around $281 million. <laughs> But this was not Disney's only animated failure of 2022. Disney Pixar's decision to not use Tim Allen to voice the character of Lightyear 
was probably one of the largest contributing factors to the film flopping in theaters, as well as its woke content that led to the film being banned in 14 countries, including China. The next two films that flopped are in the $300 million loss range. First is the movie Moonfall, which only earned a paltry $59 million globally with a $150 million budget and an estimated $375 million break-even point for a loss of around $316 million. The film was panned by critics and the audience if we look at the entire audience, not just Rotten Tomatoes' so-called verified users. The film has a stupid plot premise, and few were interested in seeing it. And the other flop in this range was Disney's recently released animated film, Strange World, which, with roughly a $157.5 million production budget from reported estimates, the film's estimated break-even point was around $394 million. But the film has only managed to earn $58 million globally for an estimated loss of $336 million. I think it's safe to say that Strange World epitomizes the saying, Go woke, go broke. In spite of mixed but overall positive critical reviews, the audience that did go and see this film was unimpressed. Now we're at the two final films that flopped, and the first one did so in the $400 million range, and that is the infamous Disney Pixar film named Turning Red, which was essentially a story about a girl having her first period symbolized by her turning into a red panda. Instead of being released in theaters within the U.S. and most of the world, it went direct to streaming, but it did open theatrically in a few international locations where it earned $11 million. This was for a film that had a $175 million production budget, which was more than the one that Top Gun Maverick had, and an estimated break-even point of $438 million. Thus, the film lost around $427 million for Disney and Pixar. <laughs> And that brings us to the final flop that we'll talk about in this video. And it was in the $500 million loss range. And no, I'm not kidding. And that film was the film The Gray Man, which was panned by critics, but had mixed audience scores. It had a brief international theatrical run where it earned around $451,000. Had Netflix allowed this film to have a full theatrical release instead of just placing it onto their streaming service, it might have recouped at least part of the film's massive $200 million production budget, which again was larger than the production budget that Top Gun Maverick had. Thus, it's a flop thanks to Netflix's corporate decisions. Well, that's it for the 2022 flops for now. We'll all have to wait and see whether Avatar The Way of Water can break even. But until then, have a fantastic Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching today. And a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to see more of our videos in the future and help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.